Hey, welcome back to HSM. We are glad that you've chosen to be with us tonight as we continue our series, The Power of Influence. We've talked over the last couple of weeks about, first of all, what is influence and how important is it? We need to remember that influence changes us and we are all influenced by something or someone. Those things that influence us determine how we live, the choices we make. A lot of different things in our lives are dependent upon the influence in our lives. It's important that we realize that we choose what and how things influence us or how people influence us. That is a choice that we make specifically. And the way that people and things influence us is something that really is within our control, but we have to choose and we have to choose wisely. Now there are positive influences, there are negative influences, there are things that are shaping us and changing us. The first week we talked about the clay in the hands of the potter and how we are soft and moldable. And influence shapes us like that clay. The key that we have to remember is that Jesus is the most powerful influence in our lives if we allow him to be. He can shape and mold us into what God intended us to be from the very beginning. God gives us purpose for our lives. He gives us direction. He has a plan in mind for us. But in order for us to, to live out that plan, we have to be moldable and shapeable according to his purpose and his influence. Unfortunately, a lot of times we allow the world to influence us more than we do God. That becomes dangerous and it definitely affects the purpose that God has for us. And so as we look at the importance of influence and we look at, at what it is, we understand that it, sh it changes us, it shapes us, it molds us, and we have a choice as to how our influencers influence us, how they change us, how they shape us. The choice that we need to make is that Jesus is the most powerful influence in our lives and that he is the one that shapes how we progress and how we grow as we develop through life. We also talked last week about the influence of leadership. Leaders are going to influence us, and we all have people in authority over us, um, whether it's, it's your parents, whether it's your teachers, your coaches, uh, whether it's the police or the government. It doesn't matter. We have a lot of different people who are in leadership positions over us. They are authority figures over us, and they are going to influence us, whether a positive influence or a negative influence really is dependent upon us. We're going to have awesome leaders. We're also going to have some leaders that are kind of lame. The key is that we have to remember that it's our responsibility to learn from both of those. We need to learn something from our awesome leaders in our lives. We need to learn something from the people who maybe aren't very good leaders in our lives. We need to learn from both of those situations and allow those situations to shape us, to change us, to mold us into what God wants us to be. Now, it's very easy in those lame leader situations to really get a bad attitude, a negative attitude, and, and really handle it in a, in a way that is more damaging to us than it is good. That's all going to be how we handle it and the perspective that we take. And so it's important that we remember that whether we have leaders that are awesome or leaders that are lame, God wants to use those situations and those circumstances to shape us to be more like him and to live for his glory. Remembering what the scripture taught us last week, the fact that God has placed those people in leadership and we must obey them. We must respect that position, but we have to learn from those people as well. Maybe sometimes it's what to do. Sometimes it's what not to do, but we must learn from them and grow to be more like Christ through every circumstance. This week, we're going to talk a little bit more about the, the fact that that we are leaders and that we are going to influence other people. And so we're going to talk this week about the influence of greatness. There's a lot of discussion that's going on, especially now after The Last Dance, which was a documentary series about Michael Jordan and the Bulls. And there was a, a lot of discussion even before that about the, the GOAT, the greatest of all time, the G-O-A-T. 
and, and who that was, whether it's LeBron James or Kobe Bryant or, or Michael Jordan or who the greatest of all time was in the game of basketball. But listen, it doesn't matter what sport or what activity. Maybe it's the greatest actor. Maybe it's the greatest scientist the greatest whatever, no matter what it is, there is discussion a lot of times about, okay, who is the greatest of all time? Who's the greatest artist, the greatest painter, the greatest sculptor, the greatest singer, like I say, the greatest actor or actress, all of these things that come into play when we talk about greatness. We're going to talk specifically about how does that apply to us? And when we start talking about being an influence, so we're kind of shifting gears here. First couple of weeks, we were talking about how things influence us. At the end of last week, we talked about how leaders influence us, but how we're also going to be leaders and we're going to influence others. But this week, we're going to really shift that into more of how do we influence other people? What kind of influence are we? The question that I'd like to ask here as we even get started is, the parents of your friends, would they look at you, would they know you and say, this person is a good influence on my student. This is someone that I want my student to be around. Truth is, we are who we hang out with. And so not only is that important for you and the reputation you have as far as who you spend your time with, but think about this. How important is it that you are the type of person that other people's parents, your friends' parents, want them hanging out with you. As my kids were growing up, there were certain kids, it's like, man, I want my kids to hang out with them because they're going to be a good influence. I know they're going to make the right choices. And so as we look at how we influence others, my first question is exactly that. How are you influencing other people and would other people see you as a good and positive influence? So getting back to this idea of greatness, we're going to look at a story today out of the Bible, out of the book of Mark, uh, that talks about just that and how greatness became a discussion even in the Bible. And so we're going to look at that here in just a few minutes. But a couple of points that I want to remind you of uh, is, is this. First of all, that relationship with Jesus is the most important aspect of faith. Now, the Bible teaches us that through faith, we are saved. By grace, through faith, we are saved. But the most important aspect of faith is our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a relationship. It's not a religion. We have to have a relationship. And listen, HSM students, this is where it's important for you to understand it has to be your relationship. This is not a relationship of your parents and God. This is your relationship. You have to make that choice to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ. But the most important aspect of faith is that relationship. And, and listen to this. This is very important. That relationship with Jesus Christ is what changes us. It's what actually makes us into who we are supposed to be, living for God and bringing Him glory. And so that relationship is extremely important. We need to remember, too, that relationship is not about following the law or rules or guidelines. It's not a bunch of do's and don'ts. It's, it's about how we relate with Jesus Christ and how we allow him to influence us. And we have to remember that through that relationship, the influence comes and that influence changes people. But it's because of the relationship that that influence takes place. And that's something that we really need to understand, that the most important aspect of faith and, and what we are as believers in Jesus Christ, the most important aspect of that is the relationship. And we've said this before, there are a lot of people who have the knowledge they know up here about who Jesus is and, and who God is, and they know a lot about, maybe even know a lot about the Bible. If you were here when, when Roger Shearer spoke to us, he said that this was his primary, as an atheist, this was his primary weapon against Christians. He knew the Bible, but he was not saved. He was lost. And so it's important that we understand that head knowledge is not what Christianity is about. Satan knows all there is to know about Jesus Christ and all there is to know about God. And he is the ruler of this world. He's the ruler of hell. 
And so it's important that you understand the relationship with Jesus Christ is the key. That influence from that relationship is what brings change in people. You think about it, you don't want to disappoint the people that you're in a good relationship with and the people that you love. You don't want to disappoint them. If you're in that kind of relationship with Jesus Christ, guess what? You're not going to want to disappoint him. And so it's important that we realize that the relationship is the key here as we look at how we're going to influence other people. Listen, we can't influence other people if Jesus isn't influencing us. And I say that we can't influence people in a positive and right, godly way if we don't have Jesus as the primary influence in our lives. So we're going to look at this story. It's in Mark chapter 9. If you want to grab your Bibles, Mark chapter 9, and we're going to start in verse 33. So Mark chapter 9, verse 33 is where we're going to, going to begin now, here's what kind of took place prior to this. Jesus had just cast out demons that the disciples were unable to cast out. And Jesus had explained to them a couple of things. He, first of all, explained that, that sometimes it takes prayer. Those evil demons could not be removed without praying. And so we need to remember that. Some things, the only answer is prayer. Putting it at the feet of God. But then he also, while he was with the disciples, he was telling them that he was going to die. But that after three days, he was going to come back. Now, what you have to understand is the disciples didn't get it. They did not understand what Jesus was talking about. They were so confused. And so they really didn't put a lot of thought into that conversation that Jesus was having with them. We're going to catch up with this story in Mark chapter 9 as... They are walking along the road. And some of the disciples are having a conversation. And Jesus knows what they're talking about, and he's going to ask them about it a little bit later on when they're together. So we're going to pick up here. Let's look at Mark chapter 9, verses 33 uh, and on from there. And we'll look at this situation and, and see how influence is important through greatness. All right, verse 33 says this. After they arrived at Capernaum and settled in a house, Jesus asked his disciples, What were you discussing out on the road? But they didn't answer because they'd been arguing about which of them was the greatest. Verse 35 says, He sat down, called the twelve disciples over to him, and said, Whoever wants to be first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. Then he put a little child among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes not only me, but also my Father who sent me. And so as we look at those verses, we see that there was a discussion going on on the road. The discussion was, who is the greatest? They were talking about who's going to be sitting at the right hand of Jesus when they get to heaven. Who's the greatest disciple? Now you have to understand that the disciples were looking for an earthly king, one that had a lot of wealth and fame and all of these different things, and they wanted part of that. They wanted to be considered great as an associate to this king, to this leader. And so they had a worldly perspective on what that was going to look like. Jesus confronts them. He asks the disciples, he said, what, what were you guys talking about on the road? Well, they wouldn't tell him because they were ashamed. They were embarrassed. And he calls all the disciples together. He says, hey, guys, come on over here and have a seat. Let's talk about this. He says, if you want to be the greatest, you must become least. You must, if you want to be first, you must become last. And so what happens here is this. The disciples couldn't see what Jesus was talking about as he shared about his death, his upcoming death and his resurrection. They couldn't even understand that for several different reasons. But one of the reasons is this, is because sometimes we get so focused on something that we can't even see what's taking place right in front of us. We lose track of things that are right in front of us because we're focused on something else. 
This is the situation the disciples in is they were focused on who's the greatest? Who's the goat of the disciples? Who's the greatest of all time? And they were arguing about that. Now think about that. As believers in Christ, we should not be arguing about things of this nature. And, and the disciples were the ones closest to Jesus. And so setting that example was just so disappointing to Jesus. He calls them together and he says, what were you guys talking about? He already knew. And so he tells them, he says, listen, if you want to be the greatest, then you have to be the least. If you want to be the greatest, if you want to be first, you have to be last. And it's a choice that we have to make. And what we're going to look at tonight just briefly is Jesus' formula for greatness. In other words, we all, listen, we all have, a, have desires to be great at something. If we don't have desire to be great at something, then honestly, we're not living what God wants us to live like in our lives anyway, because he expects us to do our very best. And so we all have aspirations and goals to be great at something, to do something really well and to be great. Well, listen, we should be wanting to be the greatest disciples for Jesus Christ that we can possibly be. That is our purpose for being here is to be Christ-like and to be living our lives for him. And if that's the case, we should want to be the greatest so Jesus is going to give a formula. He's going to tell the disciples. He tells the disciples, actually, what that formula is. And he says, to be the greatest, he says, you have to be last. But here's the key. You have to be the servant of all. He kind of finishes out that story by bringing a little child to himself. And he says, listen, he says, if you receive this child, who the, listen, here's the difference. The child can do nothing for them. The child has nothing really to offer the disciples. And he says, if you will receive this child, then you also receive me. And not only if you receive me, you also receive the father. Basically what he's saying is you do things for people that can do nothing for you. You serve even the ones who maybe are the most you know, incapable of serving or helping you. And it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of humility. He said, if you want to have influence, you want to have real influence that changes people. He says, it's really simple. If you want to have influence that changes and motivates people to do good things, you have to be a servant. You have to be a servant. You have to be willing to serve others tirelessly. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 11, let's look at that real quick. Philippians chapter 2, starting with verse 1, it says, Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from His love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy. In other words, give me great joy in my heart by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and one purpose. Don't be selfish. Try to impress, try, don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of it of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So really, in short, it's like this. If you want to be great, be a servant. If you want to really accomplish something in your life that matters, be a servant. 
Jesus was the picture of servanthood. He was the king of all kings. He is the son of God. He had everything. He is equal with God. He's a son of the one most high and has everything. But he separated himself from the privileges of being God's son to become a servant. So no, no matter who you are, no matter what you have, no matter who you're related to, if you want to be the greatest, and especially the greatest disciple, you want to be the greatest follower of Jesus Christ, it's going to come down to, are you a servant? If you want to be the greatest leader of your generation, a generation that has the power, the, the possibility to impact great change as this world has gotten so dark and difficult, if you want to lead that charge to change the world, how are you going to do it? You have to be the greatest servant. So it's all about what kind of servant are you? If you want to change the world, you have to be a servant. If you want to be first, you have to be last. If you want to be the greatest, you have to become the least. And so it's important that we really realize the fact that we are going to influence people the most by serving them. If you want to be first, you've got to be last. And if we put others ahead of ourselves and we adopt a lifestyle of humility, we've talked about before, not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. And being humble and, and putting others ahead of your own needs and wants and desires and serving them, you will be an influencer like none other. I'm telling you, the most... Uh, amazing people that I've known or met have been the ones who are not afraid to serve other people and to put other people's needs ahead of their own. So going back to being the greatest, if you want to be great at something, look at how you can use whatever it is that you're, that you're doing to serve, to serve others. If you're on a team, if you're in the band, if you're in drama, no matter what you do, if you're, if you're doing something, how are you using that to serve the people that are around you? Are you a servant to your teammates? Now listen, this is not saying that, that, that we're supposed to be doormats and we just lie down. No, it's a heart of humility and a heart of servanthood. Being someone who serves others' needs. Listen, if we do that, we are going to influence other people. Think about what this world would be like if people would just put other people's needs ahead of their own. The world would be so much different and be such a better place. But it's unfortunately not that way. So many people are, it's all about me, all about me, all about me. And I want to challenge you tonight to adopt a lifestyle of being a servant. A lifestyle that patterns your life after Jesus Christ. That even though you may have situations in your life that, that give you the right or the responsibility or whatever to be something greater, you choose to become less so that you can be a servant. And when you are a servant with that kind of mentality, listen, you will influence people in such a way that it will change them to be more like Christ. You will grow to be more like Christ. They will be changed to be more like Christ. And listen, I guarantee you, people will want what you have. So be a servant. You want to be the greatest disciple of all time, the greatest follower of Jesus of all time, be the greatest servant of all time, and you will accomplish that. You want to influence people for Jesus Christ? You want to influence people in a positive way? Serve them. Even the ones that maybe it's difficult to serve. That's the one that you're probably going to have even more of an impact on. Be a servant. A humble servant. Pattern your life after Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this illustration and, and the message that comes through the book of Mark and Lord, how the disciples even let pride get in their way because they wanted to be the greatest. 
Lord, help us to understand that being the greatest means that we put ourselves in a place of humility and we serve others. Lord, I pray that we would all understand that we could influence this world in such a great and powerful way if we would just ad adopt a, a servant's mindset and a place of humility, putting other people ahead of ourselves and looking out for their interests above our own. It's so hard, Lord, I know, because the world tells us that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to live for me, 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 and that goes against the world's standards. But, Lord, we know in order to be the greatest disciple, we need to be the greatest servants. And I pray that you would just instill that into our hearts tonight, and we would look for opportunities to serve others, whether it's serving our parents and our siblings and our families, our friends, or other people that maybe we don't even know or maybe aren't associated with, Lord, help us to look for opportunities to be servants, not for the recognition, but for the relationship, the relationship with you, where we identify with you and, and how you want us to live. God, I thank you for who you are and the examples that you give us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I look forward to seeing you here in just a few minutes on Zoom. Uh, just a quick update. We are looking at meeting together really soon, hopefully before the end of the month. And so keep your eyes and ears open for that. Until then, we're going to continue online, and I'm glad that you've chosen to be with us. Have a great rest of the night, a great rest of the week, and we'll look forward to seeing you again real soon.